I know I've been enticing you weekly with Get Scrimbuck's quick schemes and tempting speedy profits, but the Owl Stock Exchange is for all manner of investors, including those who want to build up an appreciating portfolio and retire to the relaxing suburbs of Janetown to invent esports once the season is done. So today we're going to cover some long-term buys that might pay you some lifelong dividends. Let's start off easy, the Toronto Defiant. This team's previous season was, to put it kindly, about as fondly remembered as the Hindenburg disaster wrapped in a comfortable duvet of vanilla ice albums and poo. However, this coming season may have an uncanny benefit. Someone from the most unholy reaches of the Dark Hold's magic, a head coach, and a pretty good one at that. On top of this, their roster looks pretty stacked, with some top-tier Korean talent being both scouted and transferred from other teams. The only slight reservation I have with their starting roster is Michelle, whose off-tank play was so irresistibly powerful last season that Seoul decided that playing two main tanks in a double off-tank meta was preferable to fielding Michelle. In a statement not unlike saying, Yes, your cooking looks fantastic, but I have this wonderful cyanide souffle here that just needs to be eaten today. But still, with prices lagging behind due to inertia of a season like a slow-motion car crash being projected onto the wall of a crumbling abattoir, I would advise that picking up Toronto Defiant stocks and holding for the long season will lead to substantial returns. Next up, we'll move southwards along the east coast to settle upon a team who have been about as successful in competition as a blockbuster opened in the middle of Chernobyl. Yes, it's for Boston Uprising, everyone's favourite buy in Season 3, unless you're called the LA Gladiators. Once again, the main driver for upwards pressure on Scrumbuck's price for this team is the backroom shakeup of York. They've brought in Laurie, formerly of WGS Phoenix in Korea, who some would argue punched well above their weight class of their roster against giants like Runaway and Element Mystic. Laurie has even brought some of the players along with him, including Valentine and Faith. In addition, their academy roster is incredibly interesting for our investment purposes as well. With a solid basis of skill, including off-tank Marvel Gabe Bullsey currently on their academy, if Boston starts to shit the bed again, they can order some freshly laundered talent to rescue their season, have a drop of a hat, and maintain value on our investment. Current prices are again held low by inertia of previous successes totaling one amazing stage and two years of mediocrity so intense that their matches essentially were relisted as circus performances over esports games. And with a safety net provided by the Academy roster talent for mid-season swaps, I'd advise buying in early on Boston for the long hold. Okay, now I know that my pushing this team is going to be the investment guide equivalent of my locking the door behind you and producing a collection of knives and saw blades, but hear me out. Maybe we should buy Valiant. I know, I know, leg day. This team is poo. My dog hates them. My grandma hates them. I hate them. Justice for McGravy. And yes, this team is compiled from spittle and bee semen, crudely fashioned into a mannequin shape and made to wear a jersey, but their price is rock bottom. This team couldn't be worth less if it was called the San Diego Glue Sniffers, but they're a franchise spot that's likely backed by the Bank of Blizzard. Odds are someone is going to come along and show some interest in this spot to revitalize the Valiant brand, as we've seen happen successfully with the Outlaws more recently. You and I could profit massively off that. We can buy long-term positions in Valiant today for a pittance from all the rats fleeing the sinking ship, knowing that this team is very likely to at least survive with our initial investment and may well gain value if the team surprises at all in APAC before any proper rescue. It's not like it can get any lower, and it's incredibly unlikely that it'll fail outright. So those are the long-term positions I think are most likely to make you enough scrimbucks to be part of a delicious human flesh buffet when the time comes to eat the rich. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel and remember, this video is not financial advice.